Have you ever wondered how an AFL player can miss a goal from literally one meter out? These 50 AFL misses won't just make you laugh, they'll seriously make you question how any of these players are skilled enough to play in Australia's greatest sporting league. Starting with GWS Ruckman Shane Mumford. Against Adelaide in 2016, Mumford marked Josh Kelly's perfect inside 50 kick, and the big man found himself in a paddock of space. Mumford thought, why take the set shot when I can run straight in and kick the easiest goal of my life? Probably because you're a 6'6 six six ruckman. Mumford's drop hunt smacked into the post. In all fairness, he has an excuse. Ruckmen aren't exactly renowned for their straight kicking, but forwards like Eric Hipwood have no excuses. During a clash with Geelong in 2021, Zach Bailey blasted the ball long inside 50. It spilled out the back to none other than Eric Hipwood. And Hipwood had tons of space on his defender, Lockie Henderson. But he didn't know that. He rushed an on the full dribble, but mistakenly tried to kick the cover off it. And Hipwood sprayed it to the right. But he's not the only player to do that. In Brisbane's 2012 encounter against Gold Coast, Todd Banfield intercepted Aaron Hall's kick out of defence and socketed it to a dangerous position, the goal square because Jack Crisp was looming there, but when he tried to soccer it, his left foot hit the wrong part of the ball, causing it to curve to the right, straight through for a minor score. Soccering the ball is definitely a poor choice of kick, but dribble kicks are even worse. While playing Adelaide in 2013, Joe Watson won the centre clearance, and delivered a powerful low floater forward that evaded an Adelaide defender before bouncing up to Michael Hurley. He was driven into the ground, but managed a brilliant behind-the-back no-look pass, straight to Tom Bell Chambers, who was 10 metres out, but he didn't realise how much time he truly had. His rush dribble kick skidded to the left. This won't be Bell Chambers' last time featuring in this video. Fremantle vs Essendon in 2013, Clancy Pierce's touched inside 50 ball was spoiled by Travis Collier, but went straight to Stephen Hill. He was nearly run down by Alwyn Davey, but saw Chris Main up ahead, all by himself, and passed it to him. Main quickly turned around and unleashed a left foot snap that hooked a little too much, hitting the post. And Main's kick isn't the only horrendous shot to hit the post, because in Carlton's 2023 elimination final against Sydney, Harry Mackay ran onto Tom De Koning's deep inside 50 entry and proved too fast for his defender, Lewis Melican. Mackay tapped the ball up to himself and took a shot, but Melican's late contact on Mackay must have affected his dribble kick because it tumbled into the post. This is not the only shot that a player has missed because of unwanted late contact. Facing off against Brisbane in 2012, Luke Tapscott centred the ball to Melbourne's goal square, where Stefan Martin looked set to take a mark, but the ball was spoiled, straight into the hands of James Magna. But as Magna kicked his checky, he was hit with a huge bump that affected his kick enough to the point where the ball ended up striking the right goalpost. At least Magna can blame the brutal collision for his miss. Liam Ryan can't blame anything because he had a clear path to go. Against Hawthorne in 2019, Jake Waterman's poor entry inside 50 went straight over the head of Josh Kennedy, but Liam Ryan ran onto it with blistering pace, cleanly picked it up, and smacked the ball straight into the woodwork. If only he'd centred it to Jack Darling, who was all by himself. Now, we move on to another Indigenous Premiership player who missed an easy goal, Michael O'Loughlin. During a clash with Adelaide in 2009, Jude Bolton crumbed Barry Hall's drop mark and gave it to Ryan O'Keefe. He weaved around an Adelaide player, swung onto his left and spotted up Michael O'Loughlin, who was in a world of his own. Why would he take the set shot when he could play on? But the minimal pressure from a nearby Adelaide defender proved too much, as his low drop hunt drifted into the right hand post. You might think that O'Loughlin was pretty close to goal when he missed, but Tom Lynch was even closer. In Richmond's 2020 encounter against Geelong, Jack Rewalt knocked the forward entry out in front of a running Tom Lynch. Lynch's pickup was clean, but his kick? Not so much. Harry Taylor nearly caught up to Lynch, which put so much pressure on the forward that it didn't even look like he was aiming for the goals. 
but Jesse White didn't rush his kick. He had all the time in the world and still miss. While playing Port Adelaide in 2016, Mason Cox led up to Jack Crisp's kick, but the ball spilled through his hands. Luckily, Travis Varco was there to collect the ground ball, and he handed it off to Jesse White, who was clearly under no pressure, with Ollie Wines a fair distance away from him. His kick was straight, but it went straight into the goalposts. However, it was predictable that if White was going to hit any of the posts, it was going to be the right one. Unlike Ben Long's kick, which hit the posts you'd least expect, St Kilda vs West Coast in 2021, and Zach Jones launched the ball forward to Ben Long in the goal square. Brad Shepard got over to intercept it, but he collided with Liam Duggan, leaving Ben Long all by himself in front of goal. Would Long hit the left post? No. He somehow sprayed his kick so badly that he ended up hitting the right one. Now at least Ben Long's miss was in open play, so you can argue that he was under some pressure. But what about when a player misses their set shot from just outside the goal square? Because in Collingwood's 2007 game against Melbourne, Travis Cloak lined up for a set shot, meaning he had plenty of time to compose himself and prepare to kick a straight drop punt. But his kick was an absolute mongrel that completely sprayed to the right side, so much so that it nearly went out on the full. His miss isn't the only one of its nature, because Tom Lynch did the exact same thing back in 2020. Richmond found themselves down by 38 to 13th place Hawthorne. Tom Lynch lined up for an easy set shot only 15 metres out, hoping to spark some hope for the Tigers. But he just shanked his kick, under no pressure at all. What is it with Tom Lynch and missing easy set shots? Well, what have I told you that Lynch doesn't only miss set shots? Because against Melbourne in 2020, Daniel Rioli sent it a high ball towards the goal square, but Max Gorn got there to spoil it. Straight to Tom Lynch, that is. But Lynch hooked it way too far to the left and thumped it into the post. To be fair, Jack Higgins was in the way, so that possibly explains the miss. But with Lynch's history, you can't help but think that he simply just shanked it. Now, would you believe me if I said I had another Tom Lynch miss to show you? Well, I do, but this time it's Tom Lynch from Adelaide. During a clash with Essendon in 2017, Tex spotted Tom Lynch out the back, all by himself in the Ford 50, and talked it to him. Lynch marked it, played on, and steadied for the drop punt. And he shanked it to the right. In Melbourne's 2013 encounter against GWS, Jeremy Howe pinpointed a pass out the back to an unmanned Jack Fitzpatrick in the pocket. But Fitzpatrick found himself on a really tight angle, and so he sprinted directly into goal to close it. Eventually, he was only one metre out. But Adam Tomlinson affected Fitzpatrick's kick with a last second push, resulting in his shot hitting the left goal posts. The same post that Adam Schneider's shot also hit. While playing Essendon in 2015, St Kilda desperately needed a goal with only two minutes remaining. Adam Schneider received a handball from Jack Loney whilst on the run, and ran into the open goal. But he got a little too close to Michael Hibbard, forcing him to quickly slam the ball onto his left boot, to avoid it being touched. Unfortunately, he aimed way too far to the left, and the ball skimmed the post. That same year, Essendon found themselves on the other end of a bad miss, with Joe Danaher to blame. Essendon vs North Melbourne in 2015, when Kale Hooker outmaneuvered Robbie Tarrant to secure an easy chest mark out the back. We all know Hooker's not the best kick, and he knows it too, so he handles it over the top to Joe Danaher, who's free in the goal square. But incoming pressure from Robbie Tarrant scared Danaher into rushing his kick. He thought, if I just make contact with the ball, it'll go through. He couldn't have been more wrong, as his high dribbler clipped the post. Danaher may have missed from the goal square, but so have elite goal kickers like Robbie Gray. Because in Port's 2009 game against Hawthorne, Robbie Gray found himself running into an open goal, when he shanked his dribble kick under no pressure whatsoever. Maybe he was already thinking about post-game celebrations. But you'll soon see how Robbie Gray made up for his miss, 11 years later. Facing off against Carlton in 2020, Kane Farrell shook off Mitch McGovern and was running into the open goal, when he got quite an unlucky bounce. Farrell was quickly rushed by two Carlton defenders and did well to squeeze out a handball to Robbie Gray. And he passed it to Todd Marshall, who's usually an amazing kick. But this time, he completely miskicked the ball and missed the match winner. But luckily for Marshall, Robbie Gray would save him from any embarrassment 
by slotting an after the siren goal to win the game. Well, at least Todd Marshall made contact with the ball, I can't say the same for Scott Lysert. Against Essendon in 2018, Andrew Gaff's snap forward whilst being hunted down was punched towards goal by Kale Hooker, before bouncing up perfectly, setting Scott Lysert up for an easy goal. He just needed to get boot to ball. And he had a fresh airy. Lysette pleaded that he made contact with it, but Tom Bell Chambers and the score review weren't buying it. At least Scott Lysette didn't do this in a final, unlike Max Holmes. During Geelong's 2021 semi-final against GWS, Jeremy Cameron dropped Brad Close's centering ball, but Max Holmes was there for the crumb. However, Jake Setton lunged forward and slightly shoved Holmes in a last-ditch effort to stop him scoring. That completely messed him up. It then rolled through for a point. But it wasn't the easiest shot in the world. It's not like Holmes could have calmed himself down, taken 30 seconds, and lined up for the kick under no pressure. Well, Matthew Pavlich had that option, but he chose not to take it. In Fremantle's 2013 encounter with the Western Bulldogs, Hayden Crozier launched a super high kick forward that looked like it was heading through the big six, but it dropped short straight into the hands of Matthew Pavlich, who played on for the easy snap. Bad decision. Jordan Roughhead was more than ready, diving forward and smothering Pavlich's kick. The ball rebounded off his hands and rolled through for a point. At least Pavlich can argue that his team was up by 20 points. They didn't desperately need that goal. But what about when your team's only up by seven in the last quarter, and you miss the easiest set shot in the world? While playing Adelaide in 2008, Ryan Cook had the chance to extend Collingwood's lead out to 13 points in the last quarter with a simple set shot. I think the fact that his set shot was so easy made Cook feel more pressure than he should have. His kick was straight, but not accurate. It smashed into the posts. That same year featured an even worse miss from literally a meter out, from a player whose team would end that year on top of the ladder. Geelong vs St Kilda in 2008, and Steve Johnson outworked Sean Dempster before taking the sliding mark. He saw Stokes running into the open goal and passed it to him, expecting him to score a certain goal. Sam Gilbert dived forward and appeared to trip Stokes, but he hadn't. Stokes had just missed the ball completely. Stokes can blame Gilbert for his terrible miss, but Jackson Merritt can't blame anyone. Because in Essendon's 2013 match against Richmond, Jackson Merritt marked the ball in space, about 20 metres away from the nearest Richmond defender. And when he spun around and ran into goal, he was still all alone. So even he was surprised when his drop hunt missed so badly that it didn't even hit the post. It was a clean miss. That could have been Essendon's first goal of the game, and Zeb Ross's shot could have been his first of the game. Facing off against Sydney in 2021, Ben King dropped Jack Billings' forward entry after possibly being held by Dane Rampey. But it didn't matter because Seb Ross ended up with the ball right in front of goal. But his ball drop was terrible and so he missed. And you may think that it's because he kicked it with his opposite foot. It's not, because Ross is actually left footed. Maybe the huge SCG crowd intimidated him a little bit. Lindsay Thomas can't use that excuse about Metricon. Against Gold Coast in 2015, Danny Stanley attempted a risky switch to the other side of the ground, but it went straight to Lindsay Thomas. Thomas was too fast for everyone, and he took two bounces before straightening up. But his kick towards goal was a mongrel that floated straight into the left-hand post, probably the fold of the wet ball. So how did Jeff Garlett do the exact same thing with a dry ball? During a clash with Richmond in 2014, Jeff Garlett perfectly crumbed the ball off the pack before steadying himself for the easy running goal. But his horrendous dribble skidded into the right post. Jason Dunster would not be happy with Garlett. And he definitely wouldn't be happy with Buddy Franklin either. In Hawthorne's 2013 rivalry against Sydney, Franklin freed himself by shoving Richards away and had the goal square all to himself but Dane Rampey's terrifying presence made Buddy rush his kick, and he sprayed it off his left boot, through for a behind. Buddy's shot at least somewhat resembled the type of kick he was going for. Jesse Hogan's certainly didn't. While playing St Kilda in 2018, Hogan won himself a set shot just a few metres out from goal, after playing for the free kick. 
but for some reason, he chose to kick a snap, the one kick that had any chance of missing from that close. And he kicked the completely wrong end of the ball. His kick turned out to be more of a torp than a snap. At least Tom Bell Chambers was able to kick a perfect drop hunt. He just aimed it in the wrong direction. Essendon vs Carlton in 2015, and Tom Bell Chambers had a set shot from right on the edge of the goal square, only 10 metres out. His kick was powerful and straight, but he aimed it way too far to the right and rattled the post. Matt Taberner's miss was almost identical, except he kicked it on the other foot. In Fremantle's 2016 game against St Kilda, Matt Taberner had a chance to cut the Dockers' deficit down to just 10. Taberner easily outmaneuvered Sam Fisher and plucked the easy chess mark, but he didn't take his full 30, instead quickly rushing his kick. And it showed, because his shot rattled the right goalposts. How many times have these players hit the posts? I mean, Hamish McIntosh couldn't avoid it either. Geelong faced Hawthorne in 2014, and Jordan Murdoch popped up a kick to the goal square to a 2v1 contest in favour of Geelong. Hamish McIntosh took the high-reaching mark, thanks to Josh Gibson being held out of the contest. McIntosh had a straight in front of kick, as you'll ever see. He'd taken his 30 seconds to cool down, but as he walked forward to take his kick, the quarter time siren sounded, putting him off and making his powerful kick bash into the left post. Now we're into the top 15 worst misses. These ones are really going to make you question how these players made it to the AFL beginning with Shannon Grant. Against Adelaide in 2007, Shannon Grant marked a short chip from Lockie Hansen, 45 metres out from goal, with North Melbourne down by five, but Heath Shaw continued to move up the field and hold on to Grant. This prompted a 50 metre penalty that should have seen Grant line up for a set shot on the goal line, but the controversy began when Grant miskicked the ball and it clanged into the post. Now, Travis Cloak features again, this time with another set shot. During Collingwood's 2013 encounter with Sydney, Travis Cloak got away from Ted Richards and took a mark on the edge of the goal square, but his kick didn't sell through for a goal. It sailed directly into the right goalpost. Now, everyone knows that the Q clash is a big deal for fans of the two Queensland-based teams. So Jack Martin seriously let Gold Coast fans down with his big miss. It was the 2015 Q clash. Martin was far too fast for everyone, but his kick couldn't beat the left goalposts. Running into goal by yourself may look easy, but Brandon Jack couldn't score from it either. Maybe it's harder than it looks. While versing GWS in 2013, Brandon Jack ran onto the forward entry just ahead of him, and the ball bounced straight up to him. He ran in, and all he had to do was kick a low drop punt through the big sticks, something he couldn't do. His shot swung into the bottom of the right post. All of these horrendous misses so far have happened fairly recently, but there are some that occurred more than 20 years ago. In Melbourne's 1999 contests against Collingwood, the Demons were only up by one point. That's when every player in the Ford 50 contest fell to ground, everyone except Ben Beams. He picked up the ball next to the behind post opened up the angle and got ready to boot it through. And he would have scored had it not been for Tarkin Lockyer, who made late contact with Beams, causing him to miss the ball entirely. Now for another Melbourne player, Simon Isold. Towards the end of Melbourne's 1987 preliminary final against Hawthorne, midfielder Simon Isold lined up his set shot from only a couple metres out on a slight angle. If he kicks the goal, Melbourne likely go through to the 1987 Grand Final, but what did he do? He sprayed his kick entirely to the left. Hawthorne went through to the 1987 Grand Final instead. Now there was heaps riding on Icehold's kick, which put a lot of pressure on him. But Luke McGuan didn't have anything riding on his kick, and he still missed. While playing Fremantle in 2012, Richmond forward defender Luke McGuan managed to gather the inside 50 ball off of Clancy Pierce's spoil, and he was headed straight towards goal, but he stumbled and lost complete control of the ball. As he tried to kick the ball, it missed his boot and rolled straight into the thick padding of the left goalposts. Richard Douglas had a similar miss. 
Adelaide were facing West Coast in 2013, when Scott Thompson's kick inside 50 bounced up to Ian Callanan, who passed it to Richard Douglas close to goal. Douglas ran straight towards goal at a slight angle, but hooked his kick left, and the ball slammed straight into the post for a behind. That's a bad miss, but it's worse when it happens in a grand final. In the 2008 grand final against Hawthorne, Cam Mooney had a set shot from a couple metres out on a slight angle to put the Cats up by two, going into half time. The 100,000 strong crowd could not believe it when Mooney horrendously shanked his set shot completely to the left after trying to kick the leather off the ball. But Cam Mooney's miss is nothing compared to Tim Membry's. During a 2018 clash with Hawthorne, St Kilda were off to a bad one goal to four start but Tim Membry looked set to give the Saints their second goal. He somehow found himself all alone in the forward 50. The dribbling ball got ahead of Membry, but he had more than enough time to cleanly gather it. But as he straightened up, James Frawley was getting closer and applying pressure. Membry's big mistake was choosing to kick a dribble kick. The ball tumbled straight into the post. Now, you're about to see how bad AFL misses can really get when the weather conditions aren't that great. In North Melbourne's 1977 match against Hawthorne, the weather was terrible and the pitch was extremely muddy. So much so that Malcolm Blight's after the siren kick went so far out on the full, it looked like he was trying to kick it to someone in the crowd. Peter Jones on the other hand, well, he looked like he was trying to kick it into the goalposts. While playing for Carlton in the 1970s, Peter Jones got extremely lucky when his Hawthorne defender tripped and fell on his face in the goal square. The ball looked destined to go through for a point, but it stopped just short and bounced into the hands of Jones, who had no awareness of where the post was. He got way too close to it and tried his best to angle his kick to go through the goals, but he clipped the post. After winning four premierships and a club best and fairest, Jones still admits that he's most remembered for being the idiot who kicked the goal post. He's not the only player who's strongly remembered for his miss. Just ask Cameron Ling. In Geelong's contest against Essendon in the year 2000, Barry Stoneham smartly tapped the ball in front of an incoming Cameron Ling and shepherded out his defender. And I can't even comprehend how, but Ling's snap ended up out on the full. Now at first, I thought it was because he kicked it on his opposite foot. No, Cameron Ling's left-footed. But you have to forgive Ling. This was only his second AFL game but Josh Bruce had an even worse miss in his 74th game. During a 2016 match against Hawthorne, Jack Billings delivered a handball over the top to an open Josh Bruce in the goal square. Even Ben Stratton had given up on chasing him, but Bruce did the impossible, slamming the ball into the post from only two metres out. Later on, Bruce admitted that he tried to kick the ball back to Melbourne, and that the goal umpire was kind of in the way as well still doesn't fully explain his miss. And surprisingly, that isn't even the worst kick on this list. So, you've made it to the worst miss in AFL history. Congratulations. And that award has to go to Malcolm Blight. Because in North Melbourne's 1981 game against Richmond, Stephen McCann handballed it over the top of a Richmond defender straight to Malcolm Blight, who was in a world of his own. But he ran the completely wrong way and Blight kicked it straight through the middle, for a point. The fact that a man can hold AFL records for both the greatest goal and worst miss is truly astonishing. But you know what's worse than Blighty's miss? You're not subscribing. Subscribe.